Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. It's Anonymous T. Hope you're having an amazing day today. Today, we are breaking down um, Mr. Dennis Byron's live. He did a couple of lives um, in regards to the day eight trial updates of the Cardi B defamation lawsuit case against Tasha K. So we are going to get right into it. So essentially, Mr. Dennis Byron said that Tasha K was making more perjury statements under oath. It went from bad to worse. Sarah Mates, who's Cardi B's attorney, she uncovered a lot more lies by the, quote, blogger lady. And it's just astonishing, essentially, that, you know, Tasha K wasn't prepared at all for this testimony. So Tasha took the stand at 11 in the morning. And the plan now is, so originally the plan was just to be for a few hours, but Tasha, can't, Tasha K ended up on the stand all day. And now they're going to send the charge to the jury on Monday, and the closing arguments are also going to be on Monday. So hopefully we can get some deliberation and things going Monday, potentially a verdict Monday, but, you know, hopefully by the latest Tuesday, if that. So then there was speculation by not just Mr. Dennis Byron, but there was a couple people who speculated this as well, that Tasha Kay and her team must have watched some YouTubes because she totally diminished the relationship that her and Lovely T had and was being asked, you know, if Lovely T was aware she was recorded and, you know, they were saying, Tasha Kay said she wasn't aware Sarah was asking her, okay, did you consider Lovely T your friend at the recording? And she's like, well, no, well, at the time I wasn't sure, but I just wanted to make a recording because I wanted to preserve it. And it just sounded very sus because all of the videos prior to this was like, why would you record your friend? Why would you record somebody unless you have something devious planned? And instead of Tasha K confirming the actual real relationship of her and Lovely T, she completely diminished Lovely T as if she was somebody she was suspicious of and therefore had to record her. So it's just, it's hilarious. And so then the biggest blunder, one of the biggest blunders, was Tasha K dropping the ball on the attorney friend that told her that the cease and desist was fake. She kept getting asked on the stand what the name of the attorney was, and she kept trying to play like she didn't know. Um, then she tried to say she prefers not to say the name of the attorney, and it's like of all of the things that you admitted and perjured yourself on the stand, you don't want to give this person's name. And they're like, this is significant because it's a federal court case and you have an attorney that is telling you a cease and desist is fake. And meanwhile, you're going on your show and doing lives saying you're going to wipe your behind with the cease and desist letters. You said something else instead. But again, it's like you made a big deal of the cease and desist not being serious at all. And so then she's like still, you know, Cardi B's attorney is still trying to ask Tasha K, like, who is this attorney? And she's just pretending like she has no clue. And the judge told her, like, you need to answer. And she's like, well, I don't really know her name. I'll have to look in my phone. And they're like, OK, didn't you just say previously this was your friend? You don't think to, you know, already know who this friend is and have advice and everything else and not know their name. So essentially, they told her that you are going to have to find this person's name at lunchtime and be able to provide that with us on the stand this afternoon. But it's just, at this point, it's just insanity because people are not taking what she says seriously because she continues to lie on the stand. And so then she's just, it's just a lot, man. It's just a lot because she was trying to antagonize Cardi B's attorney. She kept trying to refer to her as her by her first name. 
and, you know, was like, Sarah, don't look down at me and this and that. And it's just like, come on, Tasha K. Like she was like trying to have her own unwind with Tasha K on the stand and trying to do all of this, you know, antagonizing and everything else. And, you know, Sarah's trying to get to the bottom of who responds you know, two emails, two cease and desist letters, like who is responsible for, you know, taking care of things on the business side with Kiwi Studios. And so Tasha K answers in the question who responds to the letters and she says her husband. And if you'll recall, her husband did previous testimony basically saying that Tasha K runs everything, that he doesn't do anything even though that technically isn't true because he does edit videos, he does film sometimes, he does, like, he does a lot more than what he's claiming. But as far as these emails and responding to business inquiries and things, Tasha K is completely throwing her husband under the bus. So then Sarah Meads refers to the deposition that the husband said that he never responds to emails, he leaves it to his wife. And then the attorney asked Tasha Kay, was her husband lying when he made that testimony when she said that? And she says, yes. So I just don't, I don't know at this point what is going to end up being the result of Tasha Kay and her husband's marriage, because how can you willingly like testify completely throwing each other under the bus? And Aren't you guys, since you guys are legally married, don't you guys have the protection of where you don't have to testify against your spouse? Like, doesn't that apply? So I don't understand why you couldn't have just pled the fifth, chose not to answer and everything else in regards to potentially saying something incriminating in the event of potentially perjuring yourself. Like, I just don't understand the thought process with any of this as to why they are making a point to completely contradict each other and throw each other on the bus, I would not be going home to you at all. I'd be staying at a hotel or you'd be staying at a hotel because there's no way we're not going to be on one accord and not having the same testimony or not testifying each against each other at all. Like, there's, there's just no, there's no excuse for this. So... Um, you know, essentially Sarah Mates was like, okay, well, either the husband's lying in his deposition or Tasha K is lying on the witness stand. And it's just crazy, man. It is just absolutely crazy. But they did mention that somebody did respond to that email. And they did put the cease and desist letter on the big screen. So it's just crazy. So then Tasha K goes into this whole spiel about how she doesn't have access to her husband's password and that he uses a very expensive computer system. So therefore, she can't get into it and she can't access his email. And I'm like, what? I'm like, wait a minute. You guys are married. You guys share ownership of Kibi Studios and you can't get into his computer like something is just sus is completely sus. Like, why, as a married couple, do you not have the password to your office computer where you're doing business and everything else? Who cares how expensive it is? Like, it's coming from what you're doing with your show. Like, seriously? I don't know. It just sounded like hogwash. So, again, it's just Tasha K kept reiterating that her husband was lying. So then there was a funny moment that Mr. Dennis Byron mentioned, and because Cardi B's lawyer, Sarah Meets, called Lovely T, Lovely T.I., and then the judge was like, he's like, isn't it Lovely T? We don't want to bring T.I. into this. And the court broke out in laughter, because as you'll remember, you know, T.I. famously, you know, went to jail for the gun charges and everything else, and um, that was just hilarious. That was completely hilarious. So then after they took a break so that Tasha K could, you know, make up a family court attorney, <laughs> because that's essentially what it feels like. It feels like um, she just drew a name, somebody random, and now she's claiming that the name was Mimi or something. 
and didn't know her last name and that she's a family court attorney in D.C., but they want the actual names, they want the actual receipt of this family court attorney that told her the cease and desist is fake because they want to vet this person, they want to verify that she is licensed with the bar, that she is an actual attorney, and see if this story checks out, if this is the alleged correct person that told Tasha K that the cease and desist was fake. So, and it's just, it's just craziness because Tasha K is claiming not to remember her last name. However, the name would be contained within the email and they were asking if she could forward to her attorney the email. Like, it was just crazy. So, but there was a moment where the judge kind of gave a reprieve to Tasha K and her attorneys. So one error that Cardi B and her attorneys messed up on was they did not take into account the different thresholds. So you're still going to get the compensatory damages, the punitive damages, and also, you know, the legal fees, which is, you know, about a million dollars, as well as any medical fees for what Cardi B paid for her therapist and this and that. However, the one thing, and they can also prove the malice and will intent specifically from all of Tasha K's, you know, videos and audio and everything else and just the vitriol she had for Cardi B and the obsession and the excess videos. But the problem is the issue is Cardi B and her attorneys failed to provide or have an expert witness to speak to potential income that was lost because of the things that were said. So essentially, although she still had some things that were successful, she hosted the AMAs and her songs were doing well, like I think two of her singles went diamond or something. So they're trying to, they should have had somebody that said, hey, Cardi B was up for this acting role and she couldn't do this acting role or we had to go in another direction for this acting role or we had to delay filming to confirm that Cardi B didn't have herpes because there was going to be potentially a kissing scene or a love scene and we couldn't film that because we were concerned about the rumors that were spread by Tasha K. So if there was like an example of that where like a manager or somebody could have spoke to opportunities and potential deals that were missed out upon because of this rumor being spread, I think that would have been something that would have been significant to the case to at least put into perspective to the jurors and to the courtroom. You know, even though you may see her already doing well with Cardi B, with how quickly she ascended to, you know, superstardom and fame and fortune and everything else, but even with her status, there still could have been opportunities that she was looked over for or she may have initially, you know, got, but then it, they didn't, you know, want to proceed with her because of the negative press of the whole herpes stuff and the cheating rumors and everything else. So that was one area where Cardi B and her attorneys, you know, failed to provide that because that could have also contributed to the um, emotional pain and suffering to essentially say, hey, you know, and also argue that this provided, you know, a delay or just not getting an opportunity at all or opportunities pulled away from Cardi B and going to a different person. Like maybe she could have had an argument that some things went to Doja Cat instead of her or something, but they missed the boat of just having an expert witness, a manager, a PR person, just somebody that could have spoke to anything over the past three years that Cardi B was supposed to do that she either had to drop out of or the role was given to somebody else or a song was given to somebody else because of these rumors. So that was one area to where that Cardi B and her attorneys can't, you know, speak to is what is the future or past damages in terms of any opportunities over these past three years that Cardi B missed out on because of these Tasha K rumors. And I'm a little bit shocked that that wasn't accounted for. 
by the attorney. So I'm wondering now how that is going to impact what they present with the charges on Monday and how Cardi B and her attorneys are going to put, you know, some things together and all of that. And so then the judge also discussed the def defamation statute related to the Georgia law. So, um, and then they also gave Tasha K basically an out and an opportunity because since Cardi B is a celebrity and the threshold is high, like there's other thresholds that they can still hold Tasha K accountable for, but essentially, um, you know, for certain laws in Georgia, I guess, allegedly there's, um, you know, certain minimum requirements that, you know, might not be as strict or as severe compared to other states. So again, this judge is like trying to be very fair and trying to, you know, still offer a bone here and there on both sides. Because I mean, obviously, we know at this point that the case is overwhelmingly going in Cardi B's favor. But the matter at hand essentially is going to be what all of the charges are going to be and what all of the de damages are going to be that the jury now has to make a decision upon. So then Mr. Dennis Byron said that there was an analogy given in federal court, um, you know, how essentially Tasha lives in Georgia and there's like federal defamation and there's state defamation. And also, they gave an example, because I think they asked Mr. Dennis Byron, like, where he was from or whatever, and he said how he was, like, from New York, and he was from the Bronx, and he was a big Yankees fan. And so they gave, they asked a rhetorical question to put into perspective, but basically they were asking, you know, who's from New York and this and that, and if there was somebody talking bad about the Yankees, and it's a big rivalry between the Yankees versus the Mets, like... How would you feel if people were talking bad about the Yankees and that's your hometown team? You grew up a few blocks away from the stadium and this and that. Like, how would you feel? And you ride hard for the Yankees. So they were trying to give that analogy in that somebody can be like a huge fan and there could be like this little rivalry going on. However, how would you feel if somebody that you you know, really loved and supported and everything else, and bad things were being said about them. And so then it was just a lot of theater with Tasha K's antics on the stand Friday, because there were moments when Tasha K would answer a question, and then there were moments when she chose to deflect, or she would play like, can you reword that? Can you say that? Or she would give answers roundabout answers instead of just saying what it is if it's like a basic question and then she would try to pretend like oh I don't know the question but she knew exactly what the question was so it's like she'll volunteer additional information that will perjure herself and admit to lying about certain things but then for other questions she pretends she doesn't know what she's being asked or um you know pretends that like she has no clue what the answer is and so it's just, it was just very, I don't know if it was a part of a strategy or not. Um, but again, like I had mentioned earlier, in addition to those shenanigans and trying to call, you know, Cardi B's attorney, Sarah, like kept addressing her as Sarah versus like, you know, Ms. Mace or Mrs. Mates, like, or just, I don't know. It was just like the lack of respect for me, but just trying to make it seem as though they're cool or on the, they're on the same wavelength, kind of like how she did like the we with her and Lovely T and how she tried to put her and Cardi B on the same level as if they have like some type of friendship that turned into a feud when they have no personal relationship. And so... I don't know, like, if <laughs> it's like you guys are going back and forth. And I think Sarah, she was getting pissed. But I think they were trying to, you know, see if they could rattle Sarah Mates enough to where she could completely lose it. But she has too much experience, you know, as an attorney to not completely lose it. So, but again, as the juror, do you think something like this is effective? If you have somebody on the stand that has lied multiple times, you've already seen, you know, the overwhelming evidence against her, and now you see her trying to do this tit for tat type of game with the prosecution. Like, I just don't, 
I don't see how this can, you know, go the way that they want this to go. So they felt as though, you know, this this day, Tasha K on the stand, her little back and forth with Sarah Mates, Cardi B's attorney was like the gift that keeps on giving. And as far as Cardi B, because there's a lot of people asking questions in terms of what was Cardi B's demeanor, how was she doing? And she really just seemed like she was unbothered and she was just, you know, in, you know, keeping her poise, just not reacting to the things that Tasha K was trying to do and her little, you know, antics and tactics and things that she was trying to do to try to get a rise out of Cardi B. So... And then also, I was in, it, this is all speculation, but Mr. Dennis Byron was thinking as though since Tasha K had threw, you know, her husband under the bus multiple times that day on her testimony, that if he was the plaintiff, he would suggest to bring her husband back on the stand to verify the things that she just said or stay with what he originally stated that would match his deposition. So to see if the husband's lying or to see if the wife is lying. So, but yeah, so then there were a lot of questions in the chat about herpes and some other questions and so Mr. Dennis Byron said that he was not discussing that so but yeah Tasha K you know Lovely T didn't know that Tasha K was recording her and Tasha K was able to manipulate the call and kind of execute and direct the call for things that she wanted and it's just the irony for me because this is like the same past couple of weeks where there's all this drama with Storm and then Tasha K, she gets on audio and on another blogger's page and basically says, oh yeah, we've got audio once she sees the conversation going in a certain way and Storm's reaction is like, wait, what? How do you have audio? And it, it's just a hot mess. But again, it's like at this point, if you choose to get involved with Tasha K or if you've already been involved with Tasha K, she likely has recordings of you without your knowledge. So just saying. But again, it's just Tasha K like completely orchestrating all of these shenanigans. And Lovely T never said we did this because Lovely T is on the call thinking she's, you know, talking to her friend and it's all being manipulated. So somebody also asked in the chat, what was Tasha's defense? And it was funny because Mr. Dennis Byron was like, well, what defense? Like, he's trying to figure out since she's been there what the defense is. And that Tasha K basically is relying on the Georgia law um, since Cardi B is a celebrity to prove defamation to a public figure like Cardi B. So, but yeah, he also said there was just so many rapid fire questions by Sarah Meats. And then another moment where she was caught, where Tasha K was ta caught in a lie was they were asked, she was asked, you know, when you had your deposition and you testified that you were not a journalist and Tasha K said yes. And so then she said, okay, but then you tell your subscribers on your platform, on your channel, on your show that you were a journalist. And so Tasha K says yes. And so she's like, so you're lying to your fan base, you're lying to the winos, claiming that you are a journalist to them, but you already said in a deposition, and you're saying on the stand, that you are not a journalist. And so it's just crazy to me, because journalists, if you have that background, if you have that training, there is an element of teaching, you know, integrity, teaching fact checking, teaching, um, you know, having a moral compass, trying to get the correct story and not just a story that may not be the correct information or may be salacious or may be defamatory and slanderous versus just simply reporting the facts. So for Tasha Kay to even put herself as a journalist, knowing how she reports stories on her platform is hilarious. And I can't believe that she lied to her fans like that. I just can't believe it.
But again, there's a certain vetting process that journalists have to go through. So, and it's the fact that Tasha Kay, like, willingly admits that she's not researching anything, she's not fact-checking anything, that she knows that certain things she says she believes to be true, but she also knows that she also spreads fake news as well. But she was in denial in terms of what the percentages were on that. She tried to make it seem as though she doesn't lie that often, but really she does lie that often because a lot of times she, you know, basically will tell a partial truth of something thing and then she puts all these additional lies on top of it and on top of it and on top of it because it's a lot more scandalous it's a lot more salacious if you say things that are going to defame and slander a celebrity versus just sticking to the facts whether it is good or bad about them and reporting a story um so that is one thing as well so then there was just, um, you know, because they had to play, remember, they're reacting to having to listen to this nearly two-hour call because you'll recall Cardi B's attorneys, they only clipped out what they felt was pertinent to the case. And this time around, you know, Sarah Mates is going in because she's like, you have all of this information on this audio, like, lovely T's medical issues, like just putting her out there to the world. And so, you know, Mr. Dennis Byron's perspective is wondering how the jury is going to interpret this as Tasha Kay just has no regard for people's privacy and is willingly able to, you know, record friends or non-friends or what have you um, without their knowledge. And she's completely, you know, conducting the phone call without them knowing that they are being recorded and some of their answers can be manipulated by what Tasha Kay is telling them. And she could be potentially lying or exaggerating certain things as well to make it seem like she's got a team of people behind her and that they're all on the same accord when re in reality it's only Tasha Kay that's on the accord of the agenda that she wants to push. So again, there's just questions in terms of what is the strategy? Why are they just throwing everything in the, kin the kitchen sink and seeing, seeing what sticks? And essentially that's what the defense feels like is they just tried all of these things, all of these tactics to see what is going to hold weight with the jury. But it just doesn't seem like anything is connecting because it, there is no, there was no process, you know, for this defense. So. Um, again, Mr. Dennis Byron felt like the defense did decent, um, that they were, <laughs> I don't know, like, I just, I don't know, it's just wild to me, but there was just so many lies that were exposed, and Mr. Dennis Byron still wanted to make it a point to say, hey, even though we know technically what this outcome is looking and swinging to be, we still have to be fair, we still have to report it as though... We do not know the outcome and the outcome still can go either way because it's just a level of professionalism and a level of integrity and moral compass that comes with that. Even though from everybody's reporting on what they are actually seeing in this courtroom, it just looks like it's a hot mess. It looks as though, you know, everything is going against Tasha Kay, but there are instances where the judge, you know, will intervene and there will be certain breaks and things that are given to her. So, but essentially Mr. Dennis Byron said that like when the transcripts come out, it's like a movie. Like you can't even like script it because of just some of the wackiness that was involved. So, but yeah, um, then the issue with the defense attorney, so they felt as though overall, like, this week, the defense wasn't as bad. However, it just wasn't, you know, relevant. Like, what in that two-hour video was relevant to the defense? So then Olga, for whatever reason, was trying to add some evidence that was not vetted in Discovery, and I don't know if it was something recent that they received or what, but they were trying to submit it as part of their defense. And it's like, that's again, one of these lawyer 101 things, not to bring in evidence during the trial, 
Um, you like that's why you go through the pre-trial conference. That's why you go through the vetting process of what will and will not be submitted into evidence and how that is going to be, you know, appropriate for the defense or the prosecution or what have you. And they're trying to do like these last minute things. I don't know if people are sending last minute DMs to Tasha K to submit on their behalf, but it's just crazy because it's like when you do things like that, that potentially could also delay the trial because you have to still give the opposing attorneys an opportunity for them to prepare. And if that were to be allowed into evidence, then they may have to, Cardi B's attorneys may have to completely change their strategy. They may have to completely go in a different direction and change focus and everything else. And so, um, you know, it's just crazy. And there's no accurate way to validate like these receipts this late in the trial like it just seemed like a last ditch effort to try to thwart something that's already going in a certain direction and so they just said like the, the husband's just sitting there while Tasha K is just completely throwing him under and somebody asked if there was a mental evaluation that could be done and so um, Mr. Janice Byron was joking that would have been done in the pretrial, but it's just not normal, you know, and he was speaking to people who have majored in sociology, which is the study of people and people's behaviors. And so how they would, you know, look at this particular trial and look at what's happening in this courtroom and how people are behaving. Somebody asked about a hung jury. And, um, and also in the chat and also there was, um, also Mr. Dennis Byron spoke to, um, the bullying and some of the things that the trolls were trying to do and some of the winos in the chat. So he basically, you know, had to make an announcement like, hey, there's not going to be any cyberbullying. I'm against that. There's not going to be any gaslighting or those people are going to be banned from his channel. And he was just trying to understand, you know, from the perspective of trolling and the negative energy and things of that nature or just blatantly spreading lies. And it's just, a, it's it's the irony for me because it's like, your fave is on trial for knowingly spreading lies about a celebrity and continuing to do it for several times, even after being asked numerous times to stop it and numerous times to take down all videos pertaining to them without, before even getting any legal involvement. And yet they are implementing the same tactics on certain people's YouTube channels because they don't like the narrative that's being spread. So they want to bully other people. And it's just like, what are you accomplishing by doing all of this? And what person has it in their heart that they want to go out like this and completely bully other channels and bully other black bloggers who are not drinking the Tasha K Kool-Aid or who are reporting accurately on what is taking place in the courtroom? Like, why are you coming for people like that? Like, why can't you accept reality of what is actually happening? And so it was just, I don't know, it just felt like Mr. And I, I understand Mr. Dennis Byron completely because I've gotten some troll comments as well when, you know, we discussed this case. So I totally understand where he is coming from. So... Then people were asking in the chat, like, how does this compare to Princess Diana? And Mr. Dennis Byron said, you know, as far as his reporting, he's never going to try to chase somebody down like that to try to get to a story. But the issue with Princess Di was the paparazzi, like, literally chasing her on the highway. And, you know, he's not about to do that to risk injury and things of that nature. And there's different laws um, in some of these different locations. However, he did say that, like, there's people strapped in Georgia so you can't just run up on people and try to, you know, get the story or try to be in their face like that. Somebody else asked what was the demographics of the jury, and Mr. Dennis Byron said there were six white people and two black people. So, 
But again, there seems to also be this back and forth in the comments about, you know, the race and ethnicity of Cardi B. And people, some people think that, you know, she's part black. Some people don't think she's black at all. But at the end of the day, she still has a black husband. She still has black children. She still has a whole black team. So it's just weird that people are trying to throw out this racism angle and all of these other angles versus just looking at it from the perspective of right from wrong and that there's going to be people including your own people who are going to make mistakes who are going to disappoint you who are going to do disgusting things that are indefensible and that's where you have to ask yourself okay is this worth it is it worth it to just say okay because this person is this I have to defend them to the end because it reminds me of our Kelly fans to an extent like it's kind of like the same thing and even Bill Cosby fans it's like okay well we're still going to defend them and support them and do all of this and that you know even though we don't agree with what they did and it's like wait what <laughs> like so so really in your eyes they're not canceled okay got it so then um, Mr. Dennis Byron said he knew Cardi B's uh, bodyguard because they um, used to bodyguard, I guess, at the, um, I think it is called the, what is it called? What is it called? Why am I drawing a blank on what is it called? Um... It's like some type of birthday party or some, oh, it's a birthday jam. That's what it is. A birthday jam in um, Atlanta, I guess. And somebody said Freak Nick in the chat. And he was like, not Freak Nick. And it was just hilarious because I'm like, what is going on? How old do you guys think Cardi B's um, bodyguard is? And so anything else really that was significant was... Um, you know, pretty much he just, you know, Mr. Dennis Byron just wanted to reiterate the social media fighting and things wasn't, he wasn't brought up like that. And there's just a certain level of integrity and morals and things of that nature when it comes to reporting. Like, yes, of course, we know that the tabloids existed, like the National Choir and Star Magazine and things like that, um, before we have gotten to the social media explosion of things. However, this whole thing where you're just going to blatantly continue to post lies and cyberbully and employ your fan base to cyberbully others as well. Like, that's just a whole nother level that, you know, is just not good at all. Um, and so then also Mr. Dennis Byron, you know, was looking for moderators for his channel as well as people who might be interested in doing some reporting for the Hip Hop Inquirer, whether it's doing writing stories or having some sort of mentorship that is provided by Mr. Dennis Byron because he has a plethora of years of experience in reporting and breaking stories and his approach to interviews. So again, like I said earlier, even though we know the case is going in a certain direction, from a journalist perspective, he was essentially saying that you still have to you know, be objective. You still have to look at it, you know, as if it could still go either way and go from there. So then he briefly references the camera in the face it situation with choke no joke, but doesn't really, you know, dive into it too much. So, but yeah, then he just talked after that about his career and how he has interviewed Rihanna, Denzel, Sierra, and other things and just has been able to take some things you know, from his experience and expertise with different celebs. So that essentially was it for my part one of the breakdown of his live. So I will be doing another follow-up video in the other live that he did, further breaking down some of the things that took place on trial day eight. Keep in mind that Monday the jury will receive the charges they are going to do their closing arguments. Um, Tasha Kay's defense, as well as Cardi B's attorneys, are going to present their closing arguments. I think they have like an hour, an hour and a half on Monday to do that. 
so they can, again, get their final thoughts out to the jurors in hopes of the jury, you know, going to, you know, their advantage, essentially. So we will see about that. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Please react to this. I'm curious to know what you guys think about all this. Those of you, if it's your first time viewing my channel, welcome. Please check out my playlist. I have a specific playlist for the Cardi B defamation lawsuit case against Tasha K that chronicles everything that's taking place from day one. I also have a separate um, Cardi B and Tasha K playlist that's speaking specifically to the out-of-courtroom shenanigans that is going on that is, you know, driving a lot of the news and things of that nature. Um, so you guys can check out both of those playlists to kind of be abreast on what is happening both inside the courtroom and outside the courtroom as well. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. Thank you so much to all of my followers, to all of my supporters, to all the people who continue to come back to my channel and engage in the comments and, um, you know, really give off the positive vibes, the positive energy, and the positive encouragement. Like, you guys are all awesome. I am grateful and thankful and appreciative of each and every single one of you. Blessings to each and every single one of you because you guys are doing your thing, your word of mouth, your positivity, your amazing, all of you, every single one of you. So thank you for that. Thank you so much for all of the positivity that you guys are exhibiting. And with that being said, I will talk to you guys again very soon. And I hope you guys have a nice rest of your day.